this video will uh, talk about the Apollo Moon program of the 1960s into the early 70s and the actual space flights 1968 to 72. Now, the Apollo 8 uh, mission was not to land but just to orbit the moon to give proof uh, that the rocket engineers could plan out the trajectory and uh, the crew could have no difficulties in uh, uh, maintaining capabilities during the, the whole flight. So they orbited the moon December 1968. The first moon landing, Apollo 11, July 20th, 1969. Then Apollo 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17 were the other moon landings. Apollo 13 had the problem with the uh, oxygen and power and the command module and lived in the lunar module as the uh, spacecraft circled the moon and then came back to Earth. Um, so you might have seen the movie Apollo 13. So just to give you kind of a scale of the rocket that is used in the Apollo program, the Saturn rocket, uh, this is an actual photograph. These are cars down here and uh, of course the rocket much much bigger than an automobile. As it uh, goes into space, it uh, uses stages. So the rocket shell here that has uh, used up all the fuel in that uh, body is uh, jettisoned. That makes the mass of the remaining rocket smaller and easier to uh, accelerate with less mass. So uh, staged rockets were, were common in this era of uh, space flight. We want to get up to 17,500 miles an hour in the forward direction to achieve orbit. So the spacecraft would get into that orbit and then later uh, use another rocket to head towards the moon. And the, uh, again, moving target as the spacecraft leaves Earth orbit, heads towards the spot where the moon is going to be. When the uh, spacecraft gets to the moon, the retro rockets are uh, activated, and the spacecraft slows down, and the moon's gravity then captures the, uh, the spacecraft. In orbit, the lunar module with two astronauts in it separates from the command module. One astronaut stays behind in orbit around the moon. Then the lunar module lands, they do their work, they lift off again and rendezvous with the command module and the two astronauts transfer back into the command module. Then a rocket burn is performed to uh, get escape velocity from the moon, head back to the Earth, and land in the ocean, the parachute landing. So when the uh, Apollo uh, command module got away from the Earth a ways, they snapped this photo of the, uh, the sphere of the Earth. Um, Going around the moon of Apollo 8, they captured this image of the uh, roughly quarter Earth. Uh, from the point of view of someone on the moon, the Earth goes through phases of new and crescent and quarter and gibbous and full. Um, so there we are. The lunar module itself is a little bit rickety, um, kind of a tin can, uh, light and uh, Maneuverable has to be light so it can get off of the moon again. Um, but just showing the uh, picture as it was uh, maneuvering. Once landing on the moon, and the landings were uh, you know, a challenge, but successfully, uh, successfully done. Uh, astronauts would open the door to the lunar module with their spacesuits on and go down a ladder. Uh, jump down the last step. There's less gravity on the moon, so they could uh, get back up easily. They tested that. Leaving footprints in the uh, soil of the moon. There was some speculation that the dust on the moon might be very thick, and the astronauts would sink into it too far, kind of like quicksand. Uh, it turned out not to be true. The uh, soil of the moon, if you want to call it that, has been you know broken up by multiple collisions over time, impacts coming into the moon, but it doesn't have an extremely thick uh, uh, dusty top to it, uh, but does leave a footprint. 
the Lunar Lander had large pads on it, kind of like snowshoes, to uh, again prevent sinking too far into the soil. Um, so big foot pads. The astronauts didn't go didn't go to the moon just to be there. They had different scientific equipment that they left behind to detect moonquakes, uh, to detect the flow of energy from the moon inside the moon, uh, to leave back to leave a mirror sometimes that uh, can be used to shine a laser at the moon from Earth and watch for that laser light to return and uh, measure the time and then calculate the distance to the moon. And the moon is moving away from the Earth. Um, I think it's about an inch a year, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, walking around on craters, here's a car that the later moon uh, landings brought along on the lunar lander, an electric car. Um, there's no guardrail here, so you got to watch your step and not uh, go down into that crater. Um, the moon's soil is a problem for a future living on the moon as it's uh, very sharp, has uh, sharp edges to it and uh, can contaminate uh, where you don't want this soil to be. We're seeing here on the outside of the spacesuit that did not harm the spacesuit but uh, tracking in dirt into a house is not desirable. Tracking in moon dirt into your living chamber on the moon is also not desirable. Uh, and notice the color bar here. The moon does not have much color to it. Um, so different landing sites. The Apollo landing sites are in green with the Sea of Tranquility, the first landing here. But also there were landings in the highland areas where the uh, terrain is older. About 800 pounds of rocks were brought back and tested for dage with the radiometric dating, tested for the types of minerals. Um, the yellow triangles here were before the Apollo, the surveyor uh, instruments that would uh, uh, land and uh, take pictures in the, in the vicinity. Um, and then the pink triangles are the Soviet Union uh, landers. Uh, they did not send any astronauts to the moon, but they did return some soil from the moon. Oh, really? Did Apollo really take place or is it just a government uh, conspiracy? Uh, did they just do this in Hollywood with uh, special effects or was it real? So this is a photograph of the surface of the moon taken from uh, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and this spacecraft has a good camera on it and you can see places where the astronauts walked, you can see equipment left behind by the astronauts, um, and any country can do this, put something in orbit and photograph the Apollo sites. It, it took place. It was real. The Apollo program was a real program. It had real costs, too. Um, I don't remember exactly where I found this number, but uh, roughly $109 billion for the total Apollo program. If you adjust for inflation and put it into uh, 2010 dollars, and it got up to be even a little bit above 4% of the annual budget of the United States. Um, but what else would be comparable? Well, pizza. There's twice as much money spent on pizza than uh, what's spent on NASA. The use of tobacco and alcohol, also expensive. More is spent on that than on uh, our space program. So it's expensive, but it's not that expensive. Here's a plot of what the NASA budget has been over the years. So the Apollo program highlights uh, you know, going up to over 5% of the United States budget, but tapering off now, less than 1% is the uh, definite number now, half a percent. The NASA budget has not uh, maintained a constant value, but it's decreased over time. The public has a little bit lost interest after the great interest of the moon landings. A little bit less uh, political motivation to uh, pay for the space program. And the United States uh, shuttle program was uh, canceled as planned in uh, 2010. So the shuttle fleet was retired. Um, in a few years, that'll be back up and running with a new method of launching uh, instead of the, the shuttles. 
but different countries are expanding their space operations. You know, Japan and India, China, Europe, and Google has uh, set up a prize for someone who can uh, land on the moon with a rover, drive it a certain amount, and uh, do certain tasks. Uh, but the cost to get to the moon will be much bigger than the reward of the prize. Um, this is a website you should visit sometime. This money spent on the space program has practical benefits. So they're called spin-offs, where something developed for NASA uh, has a practical application that uh, you'd find around the home. So spinoff.nasa.gov. So you ought to be uh, looking through the reading guide, uh, reading our textbook, and writing down some questions. And we'll answer those if you bring them to class.